right on the nipples. For years, our ancestors used caves as shelter. Now they're the playing field of extreme adventure sport. Adventure-seeking cavers plunge hundreds of meters down vertical sinkholes, exploring one of the final frontiers left on Earth. China is home to around half of the world's cave-bearing limestone, so we sent Lonely Planet author Marika McAdam to dig deep and take the plunge into the bowels of Mother Earth. If I had to pick an adventure with a capital A, then clambering through caves with underground streams would have to come near top of the list. One of the biggest and most spectacular cave systems in China is just near Chengdu, and I'm about to meet a local who literally put it on the map. Matt Ryan is a British expat who lives in China. With over 10 years' experience, his team specialises in caving and mountaineering expeditions for adventurous travellers. One Australian in distress is going to be very, very easy for you. We'll look after you. That's a relief. OK. Matt and his team provided relief aid during the 2008 Sichuan earthquake that killed more than 80,000 people. They rescued eight terrified villagers after scaling 1,600 metres of treacherous rock in a valley of Pengzhou County. Mate, you've got a lot of equipment. We do have a lot of equipment. I guess you have a lot of people coming through. Over the last few years, more and more Chinese people are developing a taste for adventure sports. OK, well, I'm a foreigner who wants to give it a shot, so what do I need? A helmet and light. Good. Warm clothing. Also important. Equipment for climbing ropes. Complicated contraption, which looks dangerous. All right, you're going to have to teach me how to put all this stuff on. Sure, yeah. We're travelling three hours out of Chengdu to Longmendong, China's longest known series of interlocking caves. Longmendong snakes across 13 kilometres and reaches a depth almost equivalent to the height of the Empire State Building. So Matt, as far as caves in China go, how does Longmendong rate? Uh, Longmendong's pretty good. There's a little bit of everything, from sort of abseiling to squeezers to streamways. Good thing to experience everything. There are two main entrances to Long Mendong, and they're linked by almost two kilometres of cave passage. Matt's taking me through the main entrance. It's been fitted with a two and a half kilometre boardwalk for adventurous travellers with limited climbing experience. So, are we going to a cave or the James Bond villain's underground chateau? It certainly looks like it, doesn't it? China's cave attractions receive over 40 million local and foreign visitors every year. Geological sightseeing is increasingly popular with Chinese families and many caves are even fitted out with laser light shows, which makes the whole experience feel slightly surreal. I like the lighting. Is it Christmas themed? It's like this all year round. <laughs> <laughs> Long Mendong is barely tens of thousands of years old, which is fairly young by comparison with other caves. That's where we're going, up there. Through there? Through there. Which means getting through there? Yep. How do we do it? Climb over. No ladder, no rope. Nope. Just climb. <laughs> You're going to get wet eventually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cold water! <laughs> this is very cool. I feel like I'm in one of those spaces where humans aren't really supposed to be, but we're here anyway. And I'm very glad I'm doing this with Matt and not by myself. The route we're taking connects to around 10 kilometres of undeveloped cave tunnels. Geographers believe the whole area around Lushan Mountain was submerged by sea thousands of years ago. Matt was one of the original team that mapped out this subterranean cave system in 2003, taking over six weeks to complete. Oh. You doing okay? Yeah, it's a tight squeeze, but I'm getting that. Oh god. Whoa, the. It's huge. With no shafts or drops, the whole cave system can be explored without ropes or ladders. The narrow gorges and exposed climbs do require endurance, and bruising can be quite common. Don't you get scared that if you turn a corner and you're going into unknown territory that you're not going to know how to come back? Um, it has happened. We, you know, we do occasionally get lost underground. Um, not for very long, though. Weaving through Long Mendong is an intricate system of underground streams filling over 60 waterfalls and deep plunge pools. Um, hold on to the rocks. There's quite a lot of good grippy rocks just underneath the water. OK. So I'm about to climb up a waterfall. I've never done that before. Straight up. Keep going, yeah. I kind of wish that this waterfall was heated. Whoa. 
really, really cold hands. Woo! It's amazing, you get squeezed through this tiny passage and then you pop out here. So we've got two choices at this bit. We can go this way, which is about chest deep in water, or we can go this way, which is how many meters high? Uh, two and a half meters. Two and a half meters high with a very, very small gap to, to climb through. <laughs> have you seen how far down it is, Matt? Yes, I have. I think I'll go for the rock. Okay, sure. Yeah, yeah, no problem. And now crawl. All right. Up to me. That's it. Having <laughs> <we> fun? <laughs> you know, swimming would have been a whole lot easier. Oh. <laughs> That's it mate, I'm done. You're <laughs> Caving is not for the faint hearted and it's not without danger. Fatalities from falling and hypothermia can be avoided by exploring the caves with an experienced guide like Matt. To get out of Long Mendong, we're abseiling down a waterfall into an ice cold pool. Some cavers have been known to strip while crossing wet areas to keep their clothes dry, but I'm not one of them. Matt, is this the only way out of Long Mendong? This is the only way out, I'm afraid. Okay, so what's happening? Okay, so this rope is securely attached to two points back here, and we're going to attach you to it, and you're going to abseil down. Into the freezing pool of water. Can we heat it first? That'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> now lean back. And walk down. Where to go? Oh god, that's already cold. <laughs> the deepest cave climb ever recorded was beneath Georgia in Eastern Europe when a team of Ukrainian cave explorers descended two kilometers beneath the surface. Oh, this is actually quite hard. Oh god, that's cool. This experience of slipping and sliding and climbing and clambering through Long Mendong has been fantastic. And after this Spelunkian spectacular, it is very clear to me that the best in China is also best under China. With two thirds of China dominated by mountains and desert, there's plenty on offer for the adventurous traveller. Millions of years of tectonic activity have created one of the most extreme environments on Earth. From the deepest canyons to the tallest peaks, China has become the Shangri-La of all things to climb up, ride down and jump off. For centuries, explorers have gone looking for adventure on China's fabled rivers, so we cut Lonely Planet author Alish Quinn adrift and asked her very nicely to go and ride the dragon's back. Northwest Yunnan is home to three of Asia's greatest rivers, the Mekong, the Salween, and the Yangtze. Together, they form a region known as the Three Parallel Rivers. The Yangtze is undoubtedly the star attraction because it also thunders through Tiger Leaping Gorge, one of the world's deepest canyons. This all makes it a paradise for whitewater rafters, but only the experience need apply. And today, I'm going to see if I'm up to the challenge. The Three Parallel Rivers region was designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2003. Whitewater rafting is fairly new around here, but the Yangtze River has become one of the top 10 must-do whitewater adventures in the whole world. Hey, Travis! My tickets to ride are Travis Wynn and Kristen McDonald, who organize river explorations through the region. Today we're going to float about 20 kilometers along the Jinsha River, uh, past villages and through rapids and through very interesting geology all the way down to the town of Shudi. The section of river that we're rafting is perhaps one of the most classic river runs in Asia, uh, the Great Bend of the Yangtze. Yes. All right, so we're ready to go. The Yangtze is the third longest river in the world. It flows through the center of China, starting from the Qinghai-Tibet Plateau and eventually exiting into the East China Sea. 
Along this section of river, millions of years of geological movement have forced the former seafloor upwards to create these magnificent sheer cliffs and adrenaline pumping rapids. Oh boy. Is he surfing? Yes, he's surfing. This is like little baby waves, so I think it's gradually getting worse, but they're sort of uh, initiating it to us very, very slowly. Very enjoyable. The river can be tranquil one minute and terrifying the next. Ay, 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 oh, ay, ay, ay. Sweeping turns unexpectedly funnel into sheer walled gorges, and it's essential to have an experienced rafter in charge. Oh, wow. Ooh, we're coming up on our first big rapid. Oh, good, I can hardly wait. I'm getting comfortable, so bring yeah, it on. Are you ready to get cool up a little bit? Yes, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> this one's called wall banger. Wall banger? Yeah, you'll see why. Okay, I'm less <laughs> enthusiastic now. <laughs> There's an awful lot of very, very big boulders there. Yeah. Are they supposed to be there? <laughs> Absolutely one of the most thrilling days I've ever had traveling anywhere in China. It was getting to see China from a totally different perspective, and it was absolutely mind-blowing. While this area may have some of the best whitewater rafting in the world, it also offers adventurous travelers some challenging treks through some of China's most diverse natural landscapes. The most famous is the Tiger Leaping Gorge Trek, that follows a trail used by Tibetan traders during the Tang Dynasty. Hi, hi. Hi, are you Sean? Yeah, I'm Sean. Sean, I'm nice Alicia, to nice to meet okay. you. I've met up with Sean Xia, who is part of the Tibetan minority. His family has lived along the gorge for five generations. We are here. Oh, way up here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. What are we going to see up here? We see the Yangtze River, Jia <gasps> Dragon's Mountain, and this is a uh, slab hill. Let's go Which here and get a closer to look. to the Harbour Mountain Range. Be careful. Ah. Ah. With the influx of travelers to the gorge, many locals, like Sean, have turned to guiding foreign tourists through the mountains as part of their livelihood. I'm um, thank you to say the uh, Middle Tiger Living Gorge, huh? The Which Middle is, yeah, Tiger Living Gorge. Tiger Living Gorge. And Where is this going to be very like steep? the story say Tiger used that walk, jumping across the river. Does that mean I'm gonna have to climb down like a tiger? Yeah, oh, if you can. Okay, Good. I'm gonna follow you. This way, this way. Tiger Leaping Gorge is approximately 15 kilometers long and at its deepest point is twice the depth of the Grand Canyon. The area takes its name from an ancient legend that describes how a tiger frequently used a rock as a stepping stone to leap across the gorge. For my children's time, I was imagining tiger would be just from that rock jumping directly across. But the people say they're going down to the river rock and jumping again. After having trekked Tiger Leaping Gorge with Sean, and after having white water rafted downstream with Kirsten and with Travis, I can see why this spectacular landscape has been inspiring travelers and legends for over hundreds and hundreds of years. And I'm so glad and I'm so lucky that today I got to take it all in. For those that like their thrills to come with altitude, China doesn't disappoint. If the Himalayas are the giants of the mountain kingdom, then the limestone peaks of China's south are its small but perfectly formed siblings. Part geological alchemy, part Dr. Zeus, they're home to countless weird rock formations straight out of Middle Earth. We sent Lonely Planet author James Bainbridge to get a leg up in the climbing capital of China.
Yangshuo County in Guangxi Province is one of the most dramatic landscapes in southern China, with some 70,000 limestone towers scattered along the Li River. It's a magnet for adventure seekers. I'm on my way to Low Mountain. At a height of 150 meters, it's one of the many natural landmarks that lure rock climbers here from all over the world. Hi, Echo. Hey, James. How are you doing? Good. Here we are on a misty morning at Low Hill, <laughs> which unfortunately doesn't look very low at all from where I'm standing. Echo Wu runs a local climbing company. She's regarded as one of the pioneers of rock climbing in Yang Shuo. Sport climbing in the region has soared since the first route was pegged out in the 90s. There's now more than 350 new ascents established across the cliff faces. Sport climbing is ideal for beginners like me, with permanent anchors fixed into the rock to provide safety and confidence. Today we're climbing this route at the beginning part is quite easy and after will be slightly a little bit challenge. But what I suggest you to stay, put your weight on your foot. Use usually. the power in my legs rather yes. than my arms. Yes, and the tip will be when you want to move your weight from left to right and you're thinking nose over the toes, I move my nose over my toes. Okay. 200 million years ago, retreating inland seas left behind this climber's paradise. The honeycomb-like surface of the towers provide natural hand and footholds. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Ready to climb. Uh, a nice bit of knee. That's all right. Uh. Rock climbing has been part of military training for decades because of its whole body conditioning, working strength, flexibility and stamina. Remember that crack? Yes, you're going to move to right from there. Follow this crack. Yep, and right foot to the right. Yes, good job. Oh, it's getting more challenging now and I'm getting higher. <clears throat> Although Chinese watercolors from 400 BC depict rock climbers scaling mountains, today the sport in China is still in its infancy. Left foot up. But in the West, sport climbing is on the up and up. It's now been recognized by the International Olympic Committee with a view to inclusion in the 2020 Olympic Games. I'm losing all the strength in my arms. Do you want to climb up from there? You can do it, you can try it. I need to get to right. here. Yes. No, 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 lower, lower, lower to the right. The view from up here is really fantastic. Although it's not top of my mind right now. It's a great misty morning to be scaring the wits out of yourself on the side of a rock. You can lower your weight and I can let you down a little bit and walk to the right. Okay. Lowering. Ooh. And make your body shape like a capital letter L. L for low mountain. Yeah. <laughs> Coming down. Lowering. Good job. Okay, watch out your knee. Oh, you really feel Good it in job. your arms. You know, you just get pumped, as they say. And, you know, my arms actually feel a bit swollen just from that climb. So it's, uh, it's a lot harder than it looks. I didn't quite make it to the top, but maybe next time. Good effort. Yes, you will. Oh, thank you. <laughs> just down the road from Low Mountain is another remnant of ancient inland seas. At three kilometers long and cutting through three mountains, Black Buddha Caves are the largest natural caves in Yang Shuo. Into the caves we go. The caves are only accessible through a tiny opening. Mind your head. Once inside, it's all lighting and boardwalks, part of the cave's development as a tourist attraction 10 years ago. During World War II, the locals took advantage of this labyrinth, hiding out from the invading Japanese troops. To help them navigate through the dark passageways, they gave names to the unusual formations of stalagmites and stalactites. These ones look really crazy, like uh, giant octopus or big tendrils or huge giant squids or something. It sounds like a tribal war drum. So you can use the whole cave as a musical instrument. These unique mineral deposits are created over thousands of years, 
as water slowly drips across the bedrock, leaving behind the minerals. Anything else crazy to look at around here? Deep in the cave system is the major drawcard for many travellers to Black Buddha Caves. Well, I better get my hands dirty then. The Black Buddha Caves mud bath is fed by a subterranean water system, and the base of rich clay contains over 20 types of minerals, including magnesium and calcium carbonate. Many locals believe these baths can relieve joint and muscle pain and remove toxins from the body. Well, when in Rome. Today's been a real adventure. I've had a few rocky moments as I've tried to tackle climbing and caving, and it seems that the adventure scene in China is in its nascent stages, but there are so many amazing adventures to be discovered here. I mean, look at me. I've ended up in the middle of a mud bath. <laughs>